As we saw in the previous video, there are a few different types of unemployment which can, uh, can occur in an economy. And um, I'm going to do a little video on each one of those. This one is going to deal with cyclical unemployment. Uh, you may also hear this referred to as demand deficient unemployment. And uh, they, they basically mean the same thing. So this form of unemployment is unemployment which arises because there's a lack of economic activity. So this is a lack of economic activity which, in other words, means a lower level of a D. So this is the type of unemployment which is caused by a lack of economic activity. This is the sort of, uh, of unemployment that, uh, that we often see initially during economic downturn, recession, things like that. So cyclical unemployment means uh, unemployment which is caused as a result of a lack of economic activity. So if we shrink this down a little bit, we can think about this in, in a few different ways, actually. So uh, the first way I suppose that we can think about it is that we can think about it in terms of the, uh, the economic cycle itself. So if we think about this as being uh, the level of economic activity over time, then uh, if we remember earlier on in the course, we said that we have a trend rate of growth and that the actual rate of growth will uh, kind of cycle around the trend rate of growth like that. So demand deficient unemployment is the sort of unemployment that we get in those phases of the economic cycle where the actual level of growth is below the trend growth. So it's associated with that part of the negative, uh, the, uh, the economic cycle, which we refer to as the negative output gap, that period where the actual rate of economic activity is below the trend rate of economic activity. And because of that, it means that there's uh, there's greater potential in the economy than there is actually stuff being produced. And if we've got a situation where there's greater potential in the economy than there is actual uh, actual output, then that means that some of our resources are going to be unemployed and some of those resources may well be in the form of labour. And, uh, and if we're not using our labour resources, that will result in unemployment. Another way that we can think about this is if we think about it in terms of a PPF diagram. Uh, so if we thought about this as capital goods and consumer goods, then uh, what demand deficient uh, unemployment would mean is that it would mean that we had moved to a point inside the PPF. So we were previously at a point on the PPF uh, where we wouldn't have had any um, unemployment, any cyclical unemployment at least. But as a result of a slowdown in the level of economic activity, we move to a point inside the PPF, which indicates, again, that we have underutilized resources. So these are, are a couple of different ways of thinking about it. The, um, the, the other diagrams are the diagrams which involve aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And these are probably the best ones to use in, uh, in an answer because they give us the most uh, analytical potential. So if we move this up a little bit. Uh, we can draw what those look like underneath. I'm going to leave those ones at the top there so we can see what we're dealing with because actually these diagrams relate quite closely to the ones above. So if we draw our normal macro axes, so price level and real output, we know that uh, well, in, in the classical model at least, we have a situation where the long run aggregate supply is fixed at full employment at YF. So that is our, uh, our, our point of full employment. Now, if we're in a situation of negative output gap, as we saw up here, or as we said here, a situation where we are inside the PPF, what that means is that the actual level of economic activity is going to be somewhere to the left of YF. It's going to be somewhere over here. So what that means is that if we draw on our aggregate demand and our short run aggregate supply line, that what, uh, what we have is that we have a situation where the actual level of economic activity, which, uh, which we'll call Y1, is to the left of YF. And if the actual level of economic activity is to the left of full employment, then again, that's another way of saying that we have 
unutilized resources in the economy. So that's how a that's how a classical economist would uh, would analyze. Um, the cyclical unemployment. Um, now, classical economists, as we'll see later on, actually doesn't believe that this can this can last into the long run. Um, that uh, that what would happen in in this case is that wages would fall, and that would bring uh, bring the level of of employment back towards YF again. So, a classical economist believes that we can only get. Uh, demand deficient cyclical unemployment. Uh, only in the short run. So a classical economist believes that we can only get uh, cyclical unemployment in the short run. Keynesian economists, though, if we remember, have a slightly different view on what the uh, long run aggregate supply line looks like. So they, uh, based on the same diagram, so the uh, price level and real output, the Keynesians believe that long run aggregate supply has a curved shape like this. Um, and that actually what that means is that uh, for a classical, uh, for a Keynesian economist, we can actually have a cyclical unemployment in the long run, um, a, a depression, essentially, um, a situation of mass unemployment. So if we imagine we had a situation where we have a, uh, a fall in AD like this, then um, I should just label them one and two. So what we've got here then is we've got a situation where the initial price level and output level have now fallen and again because we have a situation here where uh, the level of real output is reducing then that means that we are seeing cyclical unemployment here as well so if you are a Keynesian economist you can have cyclical unemployment in both the short run and in the long run. So a, a couple of different approaches, lots of different diagrams to deal with this concept, but you'll notice that, that the thing that they all have in common is that the actual level of economic activity is always below the potential level of economic activity. So there's lots of different diagrams that you can use to demonstrate this. Um, I think the one that probably uh, might give you the, the greatest scope in your answer for analysis and evaluation is, is the classical or, or maybe the Keynesian. But, um, but I, I would stick to your aggregate demand and aggregate supply analysis for these. Um, the important distinction, though, and this matters um, more, to be honest, when we get into to A2, but, um, but to understand that the classical economists view cyclical unemployment as a short run concept. Um, and that, uh, that in this model here, the long run aggregate supply hasn't moved. Our full employment level is still here. It's just that temporarily we are producing to the left of it. Um, and that will generate some cyclical unemployment. Keynesians believe that that can happen, but they also believe that actually cyclical unemployment can persist in the long run if you end up with a situation like this one here, where we have a movement to the left of aggregate demand. And therefore, we can generate actually cyclical unemployment in the long run. But as I said, the, the main common thread through all of these different models, all of these diff different approaches, is that cyclical unemployment occurs because there is a lack of aggregate demand within the economy. So just move these up a little bit and just highlight that, that this is a lack of AD within the economy. And because labour is what we know what we refer to as derived demand. If there is a lack of aggregate demand, that means there will be a lack of labour uh, as well, a lack of demand for labour as well, because they will uh, have less need for the labour to produce the output.